This is good, right? It's a good thing. Hey everybody, thanks for taking the break, and now we're going to get back to it. My talk is focus on progress in relation to communication technology. So we're going to go through these four things, what these have in common. A magazine, the Hughes H1 Racer, an iPhone, laser-based satellite internet. I fundamentally believe that humans are tool builders. We build tools to amplify our features, our characteristics, at least on these tools to do something else, so something better, improve something. But also, the most effective characteristic is that we can build tools that are, that are almost abstract, because most of those abstract in different areas. And using those abstract tools, we can then do innovation in one area and maybe transfer it to another. If I can take you we've been talking about hunter and gatherers uh, tonight. If you can't imagine that um, as a hunter and gatherer, you actually went into that cave and built a fire, had a rabbit, maybe you had caught it, and maybe some and dried berries, and we're sitting in front of the fire, constantly had a you can eat it. You have one, um, it could necessarily be a lion coming after me. And person just told me, hey, go, oh, like there's a lion. We can here. Second, could also just be your friend saying, because uh, you always have to add and fry and then eat the rest. <laughs> now that gets into it, the fight or flight. Uh, without the context of information, we necessarily could think that that information is, I got to go, 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 or, oh, it's just to go get dinner. Fast forward to today. Our communication system largely comes down to this is most people do, or some people, with their phones, and most of them be at night, checking their emails, checking their social media, um, interacting with the digital sense. Entirely sure that this is progress. And what I would like to do is frame a method, um, an abstract thought, um, a framework so that we can maybe analyze what progress, where are we at in progress, is this advanced progress, and maybe where do we think it's going to go? Four stages of systems. Now, this is based on the theory, it's called the uh, theory of invention problem solving uh, by, I'm going to butcher this name, but Genrik Altschuler. Uh, he was a Russian physicist around the time of uh, World War II. So there's four, four stages to systems. Basically, the first is fundamental elements. And I'm going to illustrate this basically with an airplane. Everyone can kind of understand. The fundamental ele elements of an airplane are wings, some steering mechanisms, some power means to move that uh, device forward. And all of those things together are necessary to basically equal an airplane. The second stage is optimization. So the H1 racer is an optimization of the first plane, better, faster, cheaper parts, more reliable, set records, but in general had some of the more fundamental characteristics of the first plane. The third is dynamization. Actually, the parts of the system can move and based on their movement, give different characteristics. So for example, the F-14 Tomcat, if you move the wings, based on where the wings are moving, it will have different characteristics. But it's still part of the same system. And the fourth stage is self-development. Ultimately, that the system can separate, reconfigure, possibly keep some of the same characteristics, but bring on new ones. So in summary, fundamental elements, optimization, dynamization, and self-development. Now, why is this relevant? Why is this relevant to this person? Because ultimately, I think that this is a point in time, whether you think this is good that somebody's sitting there on their phone at nighttime or that you think that they should be doing something else with their time. Ultimately, I think this is a point in time where we can see the future and maybe look back. So applied to communication systems, basically that person is sitting there with their phone. The fundamental elements of that is basically messaging, uh, sending texts, sending photos, sending images, sending video. And the final elements of that is analog technology. 
we basically had magazines, newspapers, uh, I would honestly put uh, television and video into that as an analog technology. But those were the basic ideas of distributing information across a publishing network, uh, distributing out in primarily a one directional sense. The second stage is optimization. Ultimately, the internet has made the constraint of time and space largely non-existent. You, haven't, you have an idea and you put it onto a text message, you can get it onto Twitter, and it will be instantly published to the world. That constraint for everyone beforehand with physical magazines, physical newspapers, is literally gone and also is a cost. The third stage is dynamization. No longer is there just one node where one computer where you can get on and only log in for a certain time space. You can now have a computer in your pocket and everyone has a computer and there are basically a multiplicity of nodes uh, within the internet. Now, what's the fourth um, you know, suggestion? What may be the fourth stage? I actually have a special guest. His name is Elon Musk. If we could please give him a round of applause, he'll come up and he'll explain the last stage. So please give him a round of applause. <laughs> now, uh, it looks like it looks like Elad had a couple things. He was he was busy today, uh, so, so sorry. I'll take a crack at it. Let me let me take a crack at it. So, I ultimately believe that the self development of our communication system, the internet, in in essence, will be um, based on uh, and have a laser based internet internet satellite network. Ultimately. To do this, the system has to be able to be reconfigurable. There, there can be other nets of internets around our, uh, around our planet. And necessarily, this will be a fundamental element of the next phase of communication. So there were four elements of that cycle. I'd like you to remember that that's not as if the self-development part was the most advanced. It literally could be that it is a fundamental element of another system and in essence, the stage is largely just cycles that continue on. So eventually, when we do get people to Mars and colonize Mars, the fundamental element of communication to get information back and forth from the Earth to Mars will likely be laser-based internet satellite. Optimization, we're gonna need to get information very, very far away as far as we know. This is the, um, this is the best and probably the most epic selfie I've ever seen because this is us. Uh, this is the Earth, um, taken of a picture from Voyager um, at about 1990, and it's about 3.7 billion miles away. Now, to get information and to basically get any uh, digital signal from there to Voyager took about 17 hours. Optimization-wise, we need to get pretty far, but we gotta understand how far that is. So if you missed the physics class on this topic, um, one light year, as we were just discussing, is equivalent to 4.8 trillion miles. So the Voyager was 3.7 billion miles. That's about one one thousandth of the time it took, of the distance that it took for light to get out to the Voyager. So one one thousandth of an actual light year is pretty small in comparison if you think about it. However, the next stage, dynamization, could be that we contact or have contact eventually a long time ago with either life or some colony of humans through another galaxy. So for example, a spiral galaxy is the closest one is Andromeda, 2.5 million light years away. That's 5.8 trillion miles. That's one one hundredth, uh, one one thousandth of one light year. Our technology is going to have to travel a great deal of distance to be able to communicate or at least send information back and forth to something like the next spiral galaxy. Ultimately, it is possible that we develop communication systems within galaxies because we can obviously observe other galaxies out here. For example, this is the constellation Ursa Major. You're sitting in Ursa Major C. We generally know about Ursa Major. So there is a possibility that one day we will have communication systems transferring information, knowledge, culture, music, arts, back and forth between galaxies. Why is this even relevant? 
I would hope that this picture, whether you do think that this person should be doing something else or you think that this is awesome because he can now interact with the world really um, you know, from his bed side. Ultimately, I think progress is in stages. That if we take, for example, the person sitting on their phone, it's not the end all be all. It's not the most advanced technology because it could be fundamentally something for something more. And hence, if we take this example of a mental tool, some mental steps, and we can theorize what may possibly be the next innovation that's next, what stage could we be in? Because you could apply some of these things to different aspects. I believe that if we can, if we can improve our communication systems, if we can make lives better for other people to do and help other people, help themselves distribute culture, distribute music, distribute art, without any regard to where they're at. They could literally be in the middle of another place. That that is the purpose of progress, and specifically in terms of communications technology.